What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Michael Knapp Fishing. Today's video, we got a twofer. I am not going to split these two baits up because, uh, like I said in the last technique video, they're very, very similar and I'm running out of daylight so I don't really want to split them up. Uh, we are going to talk about micro swim baiting and the Demiki rig today. They're very similar baits. Uh, we're going to roll that intro and we'll dive into it, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, so very, very similar techniques, kind of in a roundabout way. Um, somebody's gonna be that smart aleck down in the comment section, be like, they're nowhere near the same. You're right, they're really not. But I don't feel like doing two videos on it because it's getting laid out, it's dark, and guess what, I'm hungry, I want my dinner. So, first up is the micro swim baiting. What is micro swim baiting? It's exactly what it sounds like. We are taking a 2.8 inch Kitech Fat Impact Shad on a, I think that's a quarter ounce head with a itty bitty fine, micro fine uh, hook. Very, very easy to penetrate those fish's mouth. What am I fishing this on? Rock, docks, open water, I don't care. I will literally fish it anywhere and everywhere because it is that versatile. When this bait shines the most, clear water, no wind, bluebird skies, this bait works. For whatever reason, this bait will get bit in the worst conditions. I hate bluebird skies with no wind. I absolutely despise it. At least if I got some wind, I can you know, usually go pick up a shaded bank and usually get something out of it. But when there's no wind, bluebird skies, nothing works. This little sucker works. Absolutely love this bait. Don't know why it works so well, but it does. Uh, obviously, you're just replicating an itty bitty little shad. That time of year, that's the proper size of the shad. Every now and then, if I need to, I'll bite off the tip of it just to make it a little bit smaller, just a little more compact profile, but I like it as it is out of the box by Kai Tech. Rod, reel, line. Line, two lines on here, guys. We are using um, braid. Let me see if I can get it down here if you can see that braid. Not very easily, that's for sure. Suffix Advance Lime Green 20 pound. Is it 20 pound? I think it's 20 pound braid, the 832. And then I tie it with the, man, I can't ever remember that knot. Is the Alberto knot maybe? I can't remember. Anyway, tie your favorite uh, connector line and then I connect it to eight pound test fluorocarbon. This is Suffix Advanced fluorocarbon, eight pound test. That is what I connect my micro swim bait to. I don't want them to see the line too much and that's about a about three foot leader. I don't want them to see the braided line, obviously, but I still want the castability of the braided line. The castability of the braided line is just astronomical. I can bomb it so much further. Rod and reel. I am using the Shimano Stratic CI4. That is my baby right there. Absolutely love that reel. And the rod I have grown very, very fond of. This is the suppressor. This is a seven foot light. It's a very, very sensitive rod. You can actually see it still flexes back here too. Light action. This is a do, 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 extra fast. Uh, very, very fast tip on it. It allows me to be able to really catch them quickly and set that hook quickly. But you have to remember, adjust that drag accordingly so that you don't snap your rod or break your line. Because you do have very, very light line. It's got a very short butt back here on it, but the way I fish it, I fish my bait like that. The, my pinky is the only thing behind it, and my other four fingers are actually above it. That's how I hold my rod like that, so I get a lot more driving power up front. And then, of course, we bring the fairy wand back into the forearm here, and that gives me the extra hook set driving power that I need. All right, the next technique and the last technique of the video series. We can get all this out of the way and pray to God we have a bunch of fishing videos. This weather sucks. The Demiki rig. Do I like it? No, I hate it. Does it catch fish? Stupid's amount of them. It, it just, oh gosh, it burns me up how effective the Demiki rig is. And I just, I like, I, un I get it. Like I understand why it's so effective, but it's boring. Guys, I absolutely hate it. I was, uh, 
MLF tournament last year, co-angler that I drew asked me, he says, why don't we go to Miki rigging? And I looked at him and said, do you want to be stuck in the back of the boat without a fish finder on your own? Didn't think so. It's, it's, it's one of those techniques that you have to be watching your graph the whole time. And in an MLF event, you're not allowed to come up front. So I don't do it in, te in, in, in tournaments, but I, I do like to go out there every now and then. If I, if I know that I'm going to go out there and I want to try it, if I want to try and catch 20 pounds of smallmouth, the Domeki rig will do it. As much as I hate to say it, it'll do it. So that is it right there. It is a jig head, a half ounce jig head on this one to a itty bitty swim bait body. This is a, uh, I think that's a three inch uh, Castaic Jerky J, and that is a VMC Moon Eye Jig. I don't usually use that one. I really don't know why I have that one on there, but either way, I, it works. I don't know why it's on there, but I, it works. The thought process behind this bait, you have got to scan and scan and scan and scan and scan. It's nothing but scanning. You have to find those fish. And for those people that don't have, who aren't blessed with good electronics like I am, that's very difficult to do. So I don't recommend the Demiki rig for everybody, but if you're blessed enough to have the high quality electronics like these hummingbird solixes by all means get behind that graph and start graphing as soon as you find them mark them mark them mark them mark them mark them mark them all just mark all of them and then turn around come back you're then going to go up to your trolling motor you're going to be looking at your 2d sonar and you want the a scope turned on if you do not know what the a scope is when you're looking at your 2d sonar the a scope is that itty bitty bar over on the side that stuff is constantly moving on it's essentially the beginnings of live sonar. It will show real time motion. So in that cone, however big, how you know, if you're in 20 feet of water, that cone could be massive. Uh, but it, it all depends on the depth of water that you're in as to how big the cone is and all that jazz. It's just, it's really a lot to get into. And what you're gonna do is as soon as you find those fish, you're, you know, graphing around on your trolling motor now. You look down, you say, okay, there's one. And then you'll know it's one because you'll see it on your A scope <clears throat> and then on your 2D, there's just a line. It's usually red, dark red, maroon. It could be any kind of colors. It will be there, you'll see it, you'll know, okay, there's a smallmouth. Now, keep in mind, it could also be a striper. We had a very bad encounter with a striper on six pound test and it weighed like 22 pounds. We fought that for a long time. You're gonna drop down to it, straight down. And that is why you want that half ounce head. You just open that bale and it just shoots straight down to that fish. Now, say my hand is that red line, that constant red line on your 2D sonar. This is going to drop down and is going to now be another line right above it. Probably not gonna be the same color, could be. It'd probably be a shade of red because it's a very hard object, uh, but it should be a different shade. And you're going to just keep it there. Fish here, bait here, hold it hold it, hold it. And eventually you're gonna see that fish come up and move to it, set the hook. It, it, I know it's not as easy as that sounds guys, because I promise you it sucks. It is not easy to do, but in theory it should be. That is all you have to do. You just watch that graph and you wait for them. The biggest problem is just finding them. Uh, like I said, it's not something that I like to do, but it's, it's effective. So rod, reel, line, yet again, I am running 20 pound braid, but I am running um, a much larger leader this time. This is six foot leader, I guess, of, oh, I can't remember if this is six pound or eight pound. Based on this floss looking line, I'm gonna say this is six pound test line. I know the light reflects it really well, but I think that's six pound. Anyway, really, really light line, so, uh, light line um, technique here, guys. That's why I don't really care for it too much. The braid, tie your Alberto knot or whatever to your main line, and then the rod. I like a little bit of a shorter rod usually. Uh, this one is a seven foot rod. I have to try and remember what it is. This is a medium moderate. Um, really probably should be using like a fast but still works for me i like you know i like the way it works this is the ambush by old 18 it's been discontinued so you can't even get it anymore honestly it's just i i threw the crazy reel on here that's why i'm using it uh i wanted to use my crazy reel and i was like well i don't have a dedicated to mickey reel rod and reel so boom there it is this is the proficiency crazy uh if you have been on my instagram TikTok. You already know about this reel. Uh, everybody knows about this reel. It is very colorful. It works, guys. You know, a lot of people were dogging it at first, saying, oh, it's just probably some cheap crap reel. 
It's not, uh, it actually works really, really well. It's a spinning reel, it's hard to mess up a spinning reel, but some people do it. Uh, I really like it, and it's got 20 pounds of drag, which is just absolutely insane to me on a spinning reel. Uh, but like I said, guys, it works really well. Just adjust that drag for when you do drop down, you set that hook. Adjust your drag accordingly, that way you don't pop your line. Guys, if y'all like these videos, do me a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and comment below. Guys, it, it's really been a grind this winter. Uh, yo, we're losing followers a lot on Instagram. Everybody is. Instagram algorithms are changing. YouTube algorithms are changing. We're struggling, guys. All of your creators are struggling. Get with all of your favorite creators, guys. Support them. Watch their stuff. Like, comment, guys. Be be interacting with your favorite creators because that means more to them than anything is you all being able to interact with them and helping them out. Guys, have y'all ever seen me out on any of the lakes, Douglas and Cherokee, the Honey Hole? That's really where I'm going to be mostly. I'll be out down at Lake Chickamauga here every night. Just, just a little, 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 little bit. If you ever see me out there, come say, hey, we'll talk a little bit of fishing as long as we don't have a tournament coming up. Like, comment, subscribe, notifications on. Take care, everybody.